He talked to his band and said, Boys, see this? Do that. It is also said that he forced them to play with a bandage on because he really didn't want to see the end product until it was ready. But I can't confirm that. So yeah, not just the composer was in his most ambitious period, but there were a lot of talented people involved. So I just can't help but think that this is one of the best, if not the best, album or record produced by Universal. It wasn't really the most successful, you know? Even the Laos was not successful, but still. And they made more like some dance punk and some hip hop and Prince was there. Oh, oh, I see. There was also like Lord and Ramstein and Ghost involved. I mean, are you universal? Why are there two charts for this? At least everybody knows that Francis and Mute is the best album of 2005. Okay, it's the best studio album of 2005. Okay, it's the best rock album of 2005. It's the best rock, rock album of 2005. It's the best Omar album of 2005. Mm, well, my mom liked it, okay? Mm, it's the thought that counts. So anyway, it was a really good record, okay? I could spend hours explaining why it's probably one of the best albums of all time, and I could spend even more time explaining why even then it's not as good as the Bellam and Goliath. Still, that's not what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about something else. The thing is that there is a missing ingredient with this album, and every time I listen to the album without this missing ingredient is it's like uh, completely frustrating and I want to talk about what the hell happened and how you can fix it. You know, Francis the Mute is like the Bible. There are so many versions that it's hard to tell which one is the real one. First, there is the fact that in Spotify and a lot of YouTube albums, the movements of the album are split wrong. First, the label split Cassandra in eight movements instead of five. So sometimes you will see Paul or another ice pick or physicist or Consafo on Cassandra, when Cassandra has none of those movements at all. Those are movements of Miranda. You can notice an example of this because Consafo is her first at the end of Sickness, and it has a reprise on Miranda. It cannot be her on Cassandra at all. Power and Other Ice Peak is the second ballad of the album. So if you want to know the correct order, Wikipedia has listed as original track listing, or well, the supposed correct order, because there is no source regarding that section, and you can even split Cassandra in several ways, based on the five movements. The only proof we have is that the original CD track list with eight splits fit with the fine movements if you up them up and also the genius lyrics website <laughs> because i swear nobody knows what the real division is at this time but for the sake of simplicity let's go with wikipedia's version for this video i guess it goes more or less like this sickness business sickness has four tracks Sarcophagi, umbilical syllables, facilis de sensus saverni, and consafo, consafo, that you know, we hear, we hear it later on Miranda. Then the two easy tracks, The Widow, which is not split, it's technically two songs in one, because you have the ballad part and the spooky carnival ambient part and then you have Elvia, the fiasques 
which is one single full song it has like I mean there is like a section with the solo part and the with the solo part but you you can say that at least this song feels like one single song and you don't really need to split it then you have Miranda 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 that goes just isn't holy anymore and it starts with Pade me Pade me me Pade me Pade 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 that is like an ambient introduction four minutes you have the ballad that is poured on another ice pick another four minutes and then you have a, like a little nice trumpet part in physicist from Mena or something and then you have the reprise of Consafo that we hear first on Cygnus if you listen both ends of both songs you are going to realize the end is the same and then you have Cassandra Nimini so Tarantism it's like mm. even less than a second because it's like an introduction and I guess it makes sense considering the you don't hear the verses or chorus of Tarantism ever again after this in the track then you have playing the nail in the nail stream for minutes family pills from 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 pills 16 minutes multiple spouse ones and 10 minutes and sarcophagi which is a reprise of signals yeah, for like one minute if digesting the album in each track is hard for you, perhaps contextualizing the songs in each one of its more smaller size moments will help you understand more about what which one is trying to do and pick the ones you like more easily as well separate your favorite ones from the ones you don't like. So are you telling me that one prog rock song is the same as five normal songs? How are you going to do this? Well, it's a little bit more complicated because in music modifications are not as a widespread thing as others. You have bootlegs that take like live performances and you have bootlegs that make like a custom tracklist. Music and movies are not really like games in the sense that you can really apply custom code to your already own piece of code. If you want to edit the media itself, you will have to share the content that is copyrighted because there is just no other way. Places like fan edits and stuff where you can get movie edits and stuff like that it's a, and a lot more underground thing than let's say Skyrim mods and on music I don't think there is a scene for music mods at all it's unheard of if we had maybe a platform like Steam that would let us modify the music files we have and that the platform can verify we own and um, you know share it with ours music mods could really take off but until then it's going to stay as a really really underground thing so i guess people will keep hearing that really stupid high pitched noise at the end of islands oh god <laughs> so yeah if you really want to do this i guess you have to take a uh, cd copy it to like your computer or take a digital version of the album and edit it yourself there is no way around it but if you do it's going to be really nice but still it doesn't really end there because there is one hidden little title track that wasn't really included with the record and it changed everything so it said the label didn't really trust them enough to make a double album since it will be like a lot more expensive so the title track got cut 
I was looking to interview a former somewhere to see what did he have to say about the thing, and I found this. Parte de lo que influyó, bueno, yo soy muy fan de, del disco Francis de Mute y yo en mi iPod lo tengo con la canción de Francis de Mute que al final decidieron no incluir en el disco. O sea, eso tiene, eso tiene que ver con el hecho de lo importante no es editarlo, más bien hacerlo o, o por o sea, cuál, por qué decidieron dejar a un lado esa canción a la hora de editar el disco. No me acuerdo, de decirte la verdad. No me acuerdo, pero sí, esa, Francis de Mute realmente es la primera... Ah, ahora sí me acuerdo, claro, porque después de decidir, este, después de decidir de qué se trataba el disco, ¿no? Y de, de, ¿cómo era? Déjame pensarlo bien rápido. Era, tenía algo que ver como que el disco se trataba, ¿no? De un tipo que va en, en, en busca de su familia real, ¿no? Porque se ha adoptado. Así que para mí se me hizo muy fuerte que hay como unas partes de tus raíces, ¿no? Que faltan, ¿no? Así que de ahí. Al final, final del disco, ya que habíamos mezclado el disco, ¿no? Y ya que íbamos a editarlo, de repente yo le dije a Serre, no, sería bien cabrón no poner la primera canción. Sería bien cabrón, ¿no? En lo que es el disco, como que cortar los raíces de lo que es del personaje, quitar los raíces y no pones la primera canción. Y después, después editas la primera canción. Y la gente puede tener como el, el mismo proceso que tiene el personaje principal que es ir en este viaje, bla, 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 y tener el viaje, entonces después encontrar los raíces al, al final, ¿no? Y de ahí salió esa idea. Uh, so basically, if you want to hear the full story, buy the DLC. I mean, still it was kind of a wise move considering that even with the title track, I still have no idea what this story is about. What about removing the ambient interludes? You have like 20 minutes of ambient interludes. You could have had the space for the title track somewhere. But no, the ambient interludes are really, really important. But yeah, it seems those ambient interludes were like really important because at the end they decide to leave the title track behind. So the title track has also moments on it and they go like this in 13 seconds which is seven minutes includes like an interlude and a song part so it's not like the just the interlude it's the part 19 song well six called swim which is the part where cedric goes asmr and then five will grow and one was dead which is the climax of the song. And some people like to put it at the end of multiple spouse ones and then have the sarcophagi reprise at the end of Cassandra afterwards. And yeah, I will really trust those people with my life. Yeah, my favorite version is keeping the title track as the opener. All right. For those people who say Cygnus is the ultimate opener, okay, maybe it will kick you into action faster, but, With the title track at the beginning, the whole album becomes symmetrical. 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 The whole album becomes symmetrical. Consider it a double album. One has nine songs with 45 minutes of music, and the other has like 10 songs with 48 minutes of music, so it kind of balances out. And even more, Miranda Boris does an introduction to the second disc, just like the title track does with the first one. Both introductions are like non-music tracks. One is like industrial drone, cat noises or something, and the other is dark ambient. Both are non-type of music tracks that give a creepy aura to each one of the sides of the album. And even more, the thing is that Francis the Mute is an album that demands your patience. If you are going to be kicked right into the action with Cygnus, once you reach the ambient interludes, you are going to be more confused because you are going to be catfished by the whole energy of Cygnus and umbilical syllables and all that. If you start with Francis, the title track, you are going to be forced to listen the non-music track you will be able to realize for the first second hey this album has a lot of bullshit it all balances out but yeah overall make whatever version you want as long as you have the title track 
So I guess that's it. With the title track, Francis the Mute becomes the double album it was originally intended to be. Or does it? It doesn't quite end there. Because in my humble, humble opinion, cutting the title track mess up not just the flow at the beginning of the album, but also the end as well, the call of Cassandra. First, the album goes in a turn loop, right? It starts with sarcophagi and ends with sarcophagi. It is a reprise from the first song that ties everything together. And it sounds kinda neat at first, but the thing is that the transition from multiple post wounds to sarcophagi is absolutely and completely atrocious. When you're going from the reprise of the chorus of Cassandra to the reprise of sarcophagi, it's just the most jarring and abrupt thing ever made. And I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. It just ruins the build up. In all of these years that I have listened to Francis the Mute, I never considered it my favorite album of the band because the pay of the al- pay of half of, of the album is absolutely chopped off. I hate it. I hate it. So let's let 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 let's go back a bit. So we said the album references the first song of the album at the beginning, right? Sarcophagi from Signals. But wait, it is all wrong because the first track of the album is not Sarcophagi, but Francis the Mute. So the reprise should be Francis the Mute, the title track, no Sarcophagi. See, it's all a conspiracy. So yeah, try this out. Split Cassandra into its right moments, but instead of leaving Sarcophagi at the end, at the last moment of the title track, Francis the Mute, around the 11 and 11 mark, or 1 minute and 15 second mark, if you did split it, like I told you. Since we don't have the stance, we don't have source code or a platform to edit this. You will have to sing the final scream of Cedric with the drop of the title track. The way the guitar goes from major notes to minor notes will give a tape slowing down effect. The album will go full circle from the climax of Cassandra to the climax of the title track. Doing the time loop and connecting the whole album together exactly when Cedric sings. This never happened. It gets better though, you might be a bit sad having the reprise of Sarcophagi getting caught, but the truth is, is that it's not getting caught, at least not entirely. Since Francis de Mille was released as a single, the final two minutes where Sarcophagi repeats over and over as seen on the radio, but you could leave them at the end of Cassandra instead. The spooky sounds and electronics have matched the ending of the album, and the repeating rates of Sarcophagy will end up referencing signals at the end, even if Cedric is not there. For a better transition, you could cut those last two moments from the first time the title track sounds, and just fade Sarcophagy into signals around the 12 minute and 21 second mark if you have the full title track, or 1 minute and 22 seconds if you did split it into its third moment like I told you. It might not sound perfect, and you know we have no stems, but it will let you transition more smoothly into signals and sarcophagi, and you will be leaving the reprise of sarcophagi at the end of the album, when everything has ended and stuff. As far as it goes with the edits I made, this is the final track I got. Francis de Mille has the first three tracks, Signals has the Next 4, 5, 6, 7, Guido is 8, Elvia is 9, and then in the second disc we have Miranda, the 10, 11, 12, and 13 tracks. And Cassandra has the 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 tracks. 9 songs on one disc, and 9 songs on the other this time, I guess. Some people might have got used to Sarcophagi as a coda. Some people, like myself, never did. So if you are one of those, I recommend you give you this little track list edit I made a try. In my humble experience, in my humble, hum, humble experience, I can't believe how better this makes the album. It just not makes the build up of Cassandra 
payoff well, but it also ends the album in a cohesive and dramatic, grandiose way. Maybe one day we can get a box set or a deluxe edition with everything included, the B-sides and the stems and whatnot. And maybe one day in that box set they can include like this version and see how it sounds to people. Uh, well, who cares? It was a dumb idea anyway.